we have Patrick Minford, a sort of academic sword and shield of the Brexiteers. Good morning to you, Professor. Good morning, John. Now, you are you are in a, a very buoyant mood about Brexit, aren't you? You're saying not only is there nothing to fear, but it's going to it's going to shower this country with with a bounty of maybe sixty five billion pounds a year. Now, how optimistic is that? Does, does that assume, for example, that there will be a, a free trade deal with the EU, at least as good as the one we have now? No, it doesn't. Uh, but, well, actually, in the in the sort of main forecast we make, we do assume a, a free trade deal, but we do another one where we assume no free trade deal. And actually, it, it's it's a better one because we start earlier. We 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 leave the EU promptly in 2019 March and go straight into our free trade policies and our policies of taking back our own regulation. Yes. And so that's that's actually better, in fact, though that isn't our main forecast. Yeah, well, well, so we could end up with no deal in our negotiations with the European Union, and that would be, if anything, even more of a golden future. Could you just maybe square that for us with what some people, like the leaders of the CBI, say when they talk about substantial loss of jobs and investment if there is no deal with the European Union? And you'd think they would know. Well, they are actually the representatives of, of industry that will face more competition, which is the point, really, of Brexit. It is to bring more competition to the economy by bringing free trade with the rest of the world, which the EU keeps out. So, of course, the CBI would say that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's perfectly natural, but it because isn't the truth. Because you say they simply fear competition, that they're just it, guarding their own and feathering their own nest. Well, they, I'm afraid that's true, because manufacturing is protected by 20% by the EU. And so if we get rid of that, of course, it means prices for these manufacturing industries do come down in the long run by 20%. And um, then, of course, at the, in the short run, they're doing well because of the Brexit devaluation. So they really ought to take advantage of that to, to bring up their productivity long term. And that will, of course, benefit the economy. That's the whole point of Brexit, really, mm. to bring competition to the economy and raise productivity. But this is not too rosy then because when you look at let's take car makers the car makers of the northeast of this of this country if we end up with no deal at all they could be facing tariffs on the on the sale of their cars on the import of the components for the cars that they are making it will put up their their their, their costs it will suppress their margins it could ev affect couldn't it patrick their investment decisions and their employment levels well, we've looked at the car industry and, of course, it's doing frightfully well. As you know, manufacturing is surging at the moment on the basis of the Brexit devaluation. And that's an important bonanza in the short run to get them to invest in the longer run in higher productivity. Of course, most of our car industry... But they could just pull up and, and start setting up operations well, well, on the not, other side of the channel for the sake well, of saving money. Well, not really, because what we see is that 60% of our car exports go outside the EU at the moment. And they are, they are world beaters, actually, this mm. car industry. So I don't I don't worry about them at all. Well, that's still these forty percent. That's really quite a large number. Well, forty percent is a large number, but of course, you see, if they raise productivity, and and they obviously can, because if they're selling to the rest of the world sixty percent of their output, why can't they sell at the same uh, uh, same prices at the forty percent? And of course, they can, and that's the whole point. I mean, no one is saying they won't lose jobs because they'll raise productivity. Mm. That's the point. This idea that the economy is damaged because you get more competition is obviously nonsense because we rely on competition to raise productivity and create more jobs yeah. in the long run by, by raising wages. So that's a nonsense argument the CBI is using. Yeah, they seem very sincere when they make the argument, but that's, that's obviously your view. What about banks? What about the City of London and the financial institutions who say that when they're, because it seems a fair bet, when they're deprived of the, the passporting rights, the, the right to freely trade financial services across Europe, which exists at the moment and could well cease in their present form at least when we leave the European Union, that would affect their investments and the, the billions, the, the tens of billions, the hundreds of, of billions that that brings into the British economy. Well, again, this is a complete canard because the city... Um, relies on its enormously high prestige as the number one world financial center because it sells all around the world. It's it's the most competitive industry we have, actually. And it relies to a modest extent on the EU, which the EU, of course, relies on the city. 
Mm. And the idea that the EU is going to be protectionist towards the city by denying it the sort of equivalence, which is the equivalent of passporting for those outside the EU, that it gives to all the other countries of the world, including the US, of course, and the other major centres, this is nonsense. Mm. Uh, and, and of course, if they do, the city will simply sell elsewhere. It's not a problem for them. I mean, they, they're not protected. They live on their wits in the world market, and the world market won't change. Mm.